In this video, I want to demonstrate how to complete one of the CSWA practice problems. There are quite a few practice problems available on the internet if you search around. And uh, so let's look at how we might do this particular problem. Now you may want to do a screen capture of this. And if you're using dual screens, put it on your second monitor so you can follow along as I do. So the first thing I'll do is I'll set my material and then I will create this global variable a and continue on from there first thing I'll do is I will set my material to 6061 alloy or whatever material the test asks you to set it as then I'm going to drag this over a little bit so I can see this arrow and it may be useful to see these columns where we can turn off the visibility of various features and sketches as I go along I save my file and then I'll start the sketching process and the first thing I knew to do is select an appropriate datum and a view to start from. I'm going to start from the right side view and as I look at the drawing that's supplied most of the dimensions go from a corner to the left going to the right on the right side view. So I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'll draw it snapping to the origin. I'll go over to the right and then I'm going to dimension this width along here as 200. I'll dimension the height as 25 and then I like to create uh, lots of rectangles rather than going around and doing individual lines I'll create simple rectangles which only require two clicks to create a rectangle okay. I'm gonna make these two lines collinear to each other so I'll select those two lines and I will set collinear so that they'll stay the same height and then I'll put some dimensions on here so the dimension over from here over to here is 50 the dimension of uh, this line is 37.5 the dimension of this line is not given so uh, don't use any dimensions that aren't given in the uh, exam if you're using a dimension that isn't given then you're probably doing something wrong to so always just use the dimensions that are given so I'm given a 25 dimension from here to here the exam might ask you to change one of your dimensions for a follow-on problem and so if you haven't dimensioned it the same way that the exam has dimensioned it then you might create extra work for yourself and see I keep not paying attention to the drawing and you know if I pay attention to the drawing uh, this dimension is given from here to here so I want to do it the same way that the, the test is presented to you and then this dimension from here to here is 10 so, and I go along and don't do a lot of work without making sure that it is fully defined so I have three rectangles here I have fully defined those rectangles now I might want to just start working at that point rather than creating additional extra entities in the sketch but I'm going to continue and uh, put another rectangle here and I'm going to dimension the height from here to here as 40 and I'm going to dimension this distance as 60 okay I think that's plenty in this sketch I don't want to add too much to one sketch so I'll finish sketch I'll save it save your work often and then I'm going to start a new sketch on the right side plane and I'm going to then draw a line somewhere along this line but not at the midpoint somewhere along this line I'm going to come up at an angle I'm going to come straight back down and then I'm going to come over and close that off and then I'll put some dimensions out this triangle and so I want a 30 degree angle from here to here and then I want to dimension this line and I'm going to do that as an equation and so I'm going to do that as equal to 50 to the center of the arc plus the radius of the arc is 35 and then I will dimension the distance from here over to here is distance a and I forgot that I was going to create a global variable for that because the, uh, they may ask you to change that and so let's go to tools I'll go to equations and I want to create this global variable a and that value of that global variable is 100 and I need to go back then and edit that sketch and I will then put in that dimension from here over to here and I'll make that equal to the global variable a notice that my triangle turns black that that sketch is fully defined so I'll finish that sketch I'll save my work thus far and then I'm going to create a sketch on the front plane where as much as possible and practical I only create sketches on the 
front top or right side plane and not on the solid geometry itself. I'm going to do a rectangle from the origin and I'm going to come over here by like that and I'm going to change all of this rectangle to construction line type and I'll put a point along here and we'll see what I put that point in here for in a few minutes and then I'm going to dimension the length of this line and that is equal to the global variable a and uh, I want this to be to the same height as the previous sketch and I almost got it to snap there when I, I created it originally I'll just drag that up drag it back down it'll snap to that point notice that this sketch turns black it's fully defined except for the point there which I need to define that point and dimension that point from here um, over to here as twice the radius uh, that we used earlier the 35 so I'm going to do that as 75 and uh, we'll see why I put that in and we don't really need to do that but um, that's the way I like to do it define my dimensions in my sketches rather than in features and so then I'm going to draw another triangle like we did earlier I'm going to draw a triangle going up I'll come back down make sure you don't snap to the midpoint wherever you happen to come back down and then I'll come over and I'll dimension this triangle and so it's 20 degrees from here to here and then for the length of this triangle I want the aligned length and I want that equal to the distance to the center which is 40 plus the radius which is 25 and that sketch is fully defined it turns black i'll finish this sketch and i will then go ahead and save my model all right i'm ready to start creating some geometry and so i'm going to select the, this line and i'll any, anything on sketch number one and i'll do extrude and so i want to extrude that area and i'll go over to selected contours i want to select this area and this area so we won't have to necessarily trim stuff up and i accidentally uh, selected the the wrong thing there so let's get this area and I'll get this area go ahead then and extrude those a distance of actually I don't even need to put in the distance because I've defined the distance in my sketches so I'll go up to vertex and I'll select this vertex and so it'll extrude at that distance select OK to that and then I'm going to extrude this area so I'll select that line I'll do extrude and I want to extrude that a distance of 70 the 35 times 2 and sometimes if I think I might uh, not understand where I got that dimension I might put in the formula so I'll do equal 35 times 2 and then a year from now when I come back if I wonder where I got that dimension from I can figure it out and I'm going to extrude this rectangle so I'll select that rectangle and I'll do extrude and I want to offset this one back 15 millimeters and, and here's where I might have put a point in here to do the offset let's go ahead and do that so I could put in the offset distance of 15. Let's go back and edit sketch one and I'm gonna put that point in sketch one for that distance and I'll dimension then from here to this point as the 15 and make that sketch visible. So here I like to be able to toggle these sketch visibility on and off in this column and uh, then I will select this triangle and I'll do extrude and I will do uh, uh, from vertex and I'll select this vertex, this point right here that I created and then I'm going to go a distance of 50 and I want to flip that direction offset it over this 15 millimeters I'll go over a distance of 15 so I was able to create the sketches without creating any angled work planes I did a few things right I'll save it and then I'm going to do a fillet I'll do a full round fillet though so I'm going to put it on full round fillet now I'm going to select this face and then I'll do my second face I'll do this face and then I'll do my third face I'll select this face and so no matter what I change that extrusion distance to that will always do the full round fillet so they might ask you uh, to make a change like that on the certification exam and by using that full round fillet it makes it easy for that to automatically update you don't have to make any changes yourself and I do the same thing on this one I did a few things right I need to save it you'll notice that I save often in fact I have a rule every time I do something right I save it up to now I use the born technique but on this one I'm going to put the sketch it'll be easiest to put it on this face so I'll go ahead and, and sketch on that face and I'm going to do two circles and I'm going to scrub this circle and hopefully it finds the center point 
of that circle and so I'll go in here and I'll put that circle and I'm going to put in a second circle and I'll dimension these two circles okay so uh, this circle will be a diameter of 25 and this circle will be a diameter of 12. Now I see that even though I picked the center of that arc it didn't automatically constrain it there so I could have convert entity to project that or select a circle select this circular edge and then we'll make those concentric it moves that to the center and make sure all of your sketches are fully defined if you're make if you're asked to make any changes and your sketches aren't fully defined it'll make it difficult for your model to update I'll then do an extrude and I'm going to extrude that a distance of 15 and then I want to put the hole through here so I'll expand this and I'll click here to make that sketch visible and I'll select a smaller circle and I'll do extrude cut and I want to go a distance through all toggle that sketch the visibility of that sketch off I'm then going to put a counterboard hole on this face so I'll select the and it's a question of whether to do the rectangle or the the hole first and so I'll do a new sketch now these rectangles could have been done uh, on the right side plane and then offsets so that would be following the born technique or we could do it either way so I'm going to uh, start a new sketch though on this face and I'm going to then draw a rectangle so I use lots of rectangles lots of circles I'm going to draw a rectangle about like that I'm going to draw, I don't want it that midpoint of that line, so avoid uh, extraneous constraints that you don't want. But I do want this to be over on uh, this edge. And then I want to center those up. So I'm going to select the uh, midpoint of this line and I'll select the point at the uh, center of this arc and I'll make those two points coincident. And then uh, let's go ahead and make these two equal. So I'll make those two lines equal and I will uh, then move the midpoint of this and I might move this over a little bit here first and I will get the midpoint of this line and I'll get this line and I'll put a midpoint constraint on there I'll dimension this line and so that distance is 10 because I made those equal both of them will then change to the same size I'll make this line tangent to this arc and then I I meant to snap to this point and somehow I missed it so I'll just drag it away drop it back there and it snaps to that point now that's fully defined I will uh, then do an extrude cut it will go to my features tool I'll do extrude cut and I'm going to select these contours now you could trim this all up but there's really uh, no real need to trim it up and I'll go the distance 5 for the cut and then I'm going to put the counterboard hole in here. I'll select on that face before I start the hole wizard then I'll select the hole wizard and I'm gonna go ahead, well I'll, I'll tell it legacy hole and we'll tell it to do a counterboard hole and for the position of it I'm gonna uh, scrub over this arc and then I can uh, click on the uh, center of that arc and then I'll go in and put in my dimension so the uh, counterbore diameter 25 and let's start with the the hole diameter so the the hole diameter is 15 the counterbore diameter is 25 and the counterbore depth is 5 now make sure that those two sketches are fully constrained so i was worried that i missed the center point on that circle so let's edit that sketch and uh, make sure that this circle that point is concentric to this outside circle so that that's that sketch is fully defined now if I'd been a little bit more careful at the beginning I could have snapped uh, exactly to that point uh, we're doing okay so far now we have one confusing feature left to do and there's so there's an arc right in here and now that I have this geometry done I can kind of see I could put that arc out here on this face but I could also put it on the uh, original sketch one so I'm going to go back to my sketch one and I'll edit that sketch and I'll look directly at uh, this from the right side view and I'm going to draw a circle up here in space here over to this point right there and I'm going to put a node right here at this point uh, because there's a dimension given on the drawing uh, to that point and so I'll dimension then from this point up to this surface and that dimension is given as 5 I'll dimension this arc and it's given as a radius so I'll change my leaders to radius 
and then I'll dimension that as the 50 so now I have that circle in it's fully defined I'm going to turn that sketch one back on and I'm going to edit my extrusion one so I'll say edit feature and I'm going to click an additional selected contour this area right in here to come all the way over to this edge okay so now I have that curve coming over to here and then think I like to think of this as cutting it out on the shop floor I then need to cut from here back to here so I'm going to select this circle and I will uh, do an extrude cut and then I'm going to do from this face I need to get that uh, offset from this face and I'm going to cut to up the surface I'm going to cut up to that face I'm going to cut it from here uh, back to there I'll say okay to that and so that cuts out that piece I'll hide the sketch number one and I believe that completes the geometry for this part I see actually though that I cut a little piece right here that wasn't intended and uh, so I want to change that circle so I'm going to uh, edit that circle and just need to uh, cut part of it off uh, so that it, it doesn't go over into that area and so let's look directly at this from the right side view and I'll draw a, a line uh, coming from here uh, up to here and I'll put it through the center of uh, that circle and so I'll put that through uh, here make that coincident and it turns black I'm going to trim off this piece over here so I'll do trim trim that away and when I did that this sketch uh, became unconstrained so I'll drag it and I see that I lost my connection point to there I might just be able to drag it there to get that constraint on there which I was I'll update that and so now we see that that little cut isn't occurring over here all of my geometry updates so you need to be able to observe and to react quickly when you see uh, any unexpected uh, issues and I see one more area that I, I made or actually two areas that I made a mistake uh, this line should actually be perpendicular to this face and also uh, if I look at it from the right side view this line should be perpendicular to that edge so I made two uh, critical errors I'll edit the second sketch and I've turned off the visibility of my uh, constraints because I know that SolidWorks is putting them there so I can delete this vertical constraint and I can make then these two lines make those perpendicular to each other so I've uh, fixed that issue and if there's any other things that I need to go through and fix I can uh, fix those and so I see that now that this sketch is, it has become sick so I'll edit that sketch and I see that this point right here is sick and you can tell by the color of the relation and so I didn't intend to make a mistake like that on purpose but it's sometimes you know good that it that I, I do make a mistake like that uh, so that you see that, um, you have to be able to recover quickly when you make a mistake and how to how to solve those issues and so I have then another issue with this hole and I'll edit that sketch and so this concentric constraint is now lost when I change that circle so I'll uh, hold down the control key get those make that concentric alright that solves that issue and then I need to make this line so I'll go to sketch number three I'll edit that sketch and I will look at this now probably some people that were watching this as soon as I did that incorrectly they were probably going bananas uh, saying oh you didn't do that right well here we go we need to be able to fix these issues and fix them quickly so let's then edit that sketch they are going to happen to you particularly in a testing situation where you don't want to spend a lot of time on uh, recognizing and fixing any issues that occur you want to you want that to go uh, really quickly okay I think now that is the uh, correct solution uh, for our our part